Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives official. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. As the first kiss takes place on set of Body and Soul, the characters Faith and Arrow, played by Alex and Chanel, are in bed. Johnny cries cut, but they don't stop. Johnny then wakes up from his nightmare, turns over, and Chanel is not in bed next to him. Chanel walks up at her mother's place visibly fatigued. She is fed up with her husband's extreme jealousy of Alex and has asked to use her mother's shower. Chanel fills her mother in on Johnny's quarrel with her and Alex's history, the upcoming picture session, and the sex scene they're required to film. According to her, Johnny doesn't believe her. No, Paulina says she can see Johnny's point of view and doesn't hold his jealousy against him. This is just a job, according to Chanel, who claims Johnny pressured her to accept it. Paulina and Chanel discuss Johnny days. Johnny shows up knocking on Paulina's door, and Chanel opens it. Johnny still can't believe she walked out after only one argument. Chanel claims she was only thinking they may benefit from some privacy when she came here to take a shower. Johnny explains to Chanel that he acted too strongly last night, and she was correct. He really apologizes, but he claims he lost it during the session since it brought up a lot of personal issues for him. She forgives him as long as he pledges not to freak out again. She also lets him know that she and Alex will talk to Abe and Kate, as they think it's too early for a sex scene between their character, so he won't be directing them in one anytime soon. Later, when Chanel leaves, Paulina discusses with Johnny. She knows why he was jealous. Johnny says the feelings took him by surprise, and he believed he'd be cool with Chanel and Alex working together until he wasn't. Paulina assures him that he's the one Chanel married and loves, so be secure knowing that. Johnny and Paulina speak days. Alex comes at Stephanie's apartment, and she flashes to her hot dream about him. He brought her coffee to apologize for keeping her up so late, and he reveals he spent the night worried over the show. He stopped by for advice on how to tell the producers he feels they are making a mistake. He explains his and Chanel's characters are shooting their first sex scenes, which he feels is way too fast, given they are supposed to progress from rivals to lovers. He claims Chanel agrees with him. Alex and Stephanie speak days. Stephanie proposes they talk to their producers jointly. Alex shoots Chanel a text about her suggestion. Stephanie then gets a call from Jada, who tells her the truth about Bobby slash Everett's death. She's startled and tells Alex that Jada just told her Everett was murdered by Connie. She tears that she allowed that monster Connie to his burial, and every time she thinks she's healing, she loses him all over again. Alex embraces her and tells her how sorry he is and wipes away her tears. She tells him she's sorry for dropping this on him and that he should go as he has to talk to Kate. He asks if she'll be fine, and she replies she will and appreciates him being here for her. He tells her to contact him anytime she needs him, and he'll see her on set. Alex takes off. Stephanie hears sad news with Alex days. Stephanie drops by Paulina's apartment to give her the profiles of the members of her new housing task committee. Paulina believed she requested for these a while ago. Stephanie says she did, but it's been a challenging few weeks, and she's been busy with body and soul. Paulina gives her a pass since it's for her husband's program. They both discuss Chanel and Alex's difficulty with the love scene, and Stephanie says Alex doesn't want to perform it and will talk to Kate about it. Stephanie has files for Paulina days. In the body and soul office, Kate and Abe discuss their first day of shooting. Kate says Kayla has given them permission to use the hospital as a set. Unfortunately, Abe has awful news. Abe says Hattie told her either Bonnie goes or she does. Kate was terrified this would happen. Abe says they have to fire one or the other. Abe claims Hattie is the show's star and holding all the cards, but Kate wonders whether she's really his favorite character. He acknowledges Miss Delacroix occupies a special place in his heart, and the crowd loves her. Kate thinks Cassandra is popular, too. Abe understands the fans adore it when their characters spar. However, Hattie is threatening to quit, and Kate understands it makes more sense to fire Bonnie. She feels they both could make a mess of things on the first day of taping. 
Kate plays devil's advocate and says that yielding into Hattie's demand could set a hazardous precedent. She also indicates how long it will be before Hattie has another demand, and then the other players follow suit. Abe gets her point. Later, Abe is gone when Alex shows up. He informs Kate that he and Chanel feel the love scene for his and Chanel's characters is hurried. Kate thinks this is about their prior fling, but he insists it is too early for star-crossed lovers to start the performance having sex. He thinks it's preferable to make the audience wait, give them a cause to stay watching. Chanel comes and is a bit angry that Alex started without her but is brought up to speed on what she missed. Chanel asks Kate whether she gets their perspective. Later, Johnny sees Alex and Chanel alone in the office and asks whether the scene is off. Chanel insists it's not. Kate was only reminded of the flames between them when they dispute, therefore it's still on. Bonnie beats on Leo's door at the Salem Inn, then bursts in once he opens the door demanding the pink pages she requested for. She refuses to do the new scenes with Hattie. Leo confesses he didn't edit any of the scenes she had problems with. He advises her to be a professional and be glad to be a working actor. Bonnie guesses his drag race buddy Hattie got to him. Leo explains it was Abe who told him not to make the adjustments. She tells him that doesn't work for her. Leo warns her they are under the gun and must tape a complete show in one day. Bonnie knows how this industry works as she has a subscription to Soap Opera Digest. Leo hopes Johnny did, as he doesn't seem to comprehend that hot young characters on operas enjoy great sex. Bonnie makes expectations of Leo. Bonnie cares for Johnny and understands his jealousy, but she is focused on protecting her character, Cassandra, and doesn't want her to be humiliated by Charlemagne. Leo urges her to take it up with Abe and Kate and pushes her out so he can rest. Bonnie is annoyed days. Later, Abe walks up to see Leo and talk about Bonnie and Hattie. Leo complains that Bonnie was just here requesting more rewrites and his angry Abe ordered him not to modify anything. Abe says he and Kate talked it over, and Bonnie will be getting new pages, just not the ones she thought she would be getting. Abe begs Leo to make modified days. Leo is stunned by what Abe tells him to do, not seeing this coming. He points out that there will be no going back from this. Abe gets it, but this is the hand they've been dealt, and they must play it. Hattie comes at the Brady Pub, which has been set up to tape scenes. Hattie says the place looks amazing, nearly like the Pineview pub. He warns her that location isn't real, which Hattie knows, but remarks they only appear different. Roman claims the new version of the show is on a budget, and he's doing this as a favor to his wife. Hattie considers it a win for everybody, and she's receiving a major victory from Abe.